Vulnerability scanning is a method of identifying uh, vulnerabilities, weaknesses within our network, within our operating systems, within our devices. We could use a couple different tools for this. Some popular tools are Tenable Nessus or Security Center, NetSparker, Burp Suite. These are all very popular solutions. And these tools are used to perform automated scanning of our network, of our devices, to see if there's any potential flaws or vulnerabilities, as they're known, within that network or within those operating systems or devices that we can apply a patch or change or fix. So the vulnerability scanner gives us a good visibility, get, gives us visibility on what we need to resolve within our network. There are two main types of scans are the credentialed scan and a non-credentialed scan. Basically, the difference is a credentialed scan provides the login information for the device, for the operating system, and it gives you a more in-depth look. So if we were scanning a network, for example, that had several endpoints, Windows or Linux machines, a basic scan, a non-credentialed scan, would be able to identify that those endpoints exist. A credentialed scan can actually log into that account, log into that operating system, and then determine if certain portions of the operating system need to be updated or certain software within that endpoint needs to be changed. So that can be very helpful. So oftentimes it's useful to have a credentialed scan instead of a non-credentialed scan. When you perform a vulnerability scan, you're often looking at or you'll see the results listed as common vulnerabilities and exposure numbers. Common vulnerabilities and exposure numbers, CVE numbers, allow uh, cyber professionals to identify and classify different weaknesses. They can also collaborate with other professionals to determine possible strategies, things of that nature. Uh, so they can be very useful for tracking uh, vulnerabilities and determining how they work. So let's take a look at an example of a common vulnerability and exposure. Uh, let's take a look here. Here's one for a weakness within a Palo Alto Networks environment. Okay, Palo Alto Networks Panorama software. And oftentimes you'll find additional information if you click here, you'll find information from the vendor. So this one was submitted by Palo Alto. That's the CVE Numbering Authority, or CNA. It's the organization that is allowed to provide or uh, create this CVE. So Palo Alto is a major vendor. Other vendors include like Microsoft, uh, IBM, Barracuda Firewalls. Any major vendor or supplier should be a CNA or is probably a CNA, and they have the ability to create CVEs and then provide, what they do is they provide information on how to fix these CVEs. Now this one, it provides us a solution to patch, okay? So we wanna patch that CVE. That'd be the primary solution that's recommended by the vendor. And a lot of times these are solved by patches. Sometimes a patch doesn't exist, especially uh, malicious CVE, or if there's something that is exploited that a patch has not yet been developed for, that's when you can have some some trouble with it. So here's a good example of a CVE. And you'll find well, your scanned results will often list the CVE number alongside with a score that's calculated through the CVSS or Common Vulnerability Scoring System. And you'll have a different category for the vulnerabilities, usually critical, high, medium, and low. You also have info, which means it's providing you some information about like the number of devices you have or the types of operating systems you might have on your network. This is an example of a Nessus security scan. And this is very similar. This is what a dashboard will look like within Nessus. Uh, this might be incorporated into your SEM device or be a standalone solution. The CVSS system I mentioned is a scoring system that provides a number from zero to 10 to uh, show you basically how the, how the vulnerability is scored, provide a number, and provide a level severity. So if we were to take a look at that CVSS, here's a CVSS calculator. 
And we can pick based on these different categories, the attack vector, attack complexity. These values are gonna change. The impact to confidentiality, integrity, availability. See how these numbers change this? Or the subsequent change to confidentiality, availability, and integrity. These numbers are gonna change. Confidentiality is usually the score that's uh, weighted a little higher. And we also have additional metrics here, urgency, effort, attack vector, privileges required. It's a lot of different vectors, but these are the main metrics, the base metrics and the supplemental metrics. And what you'll get out of that is a little shorthand that'll show you this. So each of these corresponds to one of these values down here. And you can see if you go to the, CV, the NVD database provided by NIST and go to the Common Vulnerability Scoring System Calculator, you can find and learn about all of this shorthand and learn what it means. It's a really good technique, especially if you're trying to learn your CVE numbers. Okay, so from, so we have the CVSS. We also have a type of vulnerability scan could be a network scan. Okay, a network scan could be just used to identify, enumerate the hosts that we have on our network. A network scan tool, very popular one is called an Nmap. Okay, and there's different types of Nmap scans that we can use, ping scans, ARP scans, service scans, port scans, uh, SYN, synchronization, packet scans. So network scanning is not quite vulnerability scanning, it's a way of enumerating devices on our network. A lot of times a vulnerability scanner that's deployed on a network will also do a network scan as part of the vulnerability scan. So that can be built in. Network mapping is also a method to determine or identify the nodes in our network. And if we've done a network scan, we might have an extension like ZenMap as an extension to Nmap to provide us with a graphic or a visualization of what our network might look like. You can also manually do this by creating a network diagram. Now, sometimes vulnerability scans are prone to errors. There's different types of errors that you would have. A way to think about this is if you have a error that's true, or if you have an event that's true, that means your device is working correctly. If you have a device that's working false, or to, an event that's false, that means the device has malfunctioned. Okay, so a true positive means that there's a real event and it was detected. A true negative means that there was no event and nothing was detected. So remember, true means the device is working. Now if it's false, a false positive is that there's no event, but it's detected as a real event. And a false negative means that there is a real event, there is a real vulnerability, but it's not detected, it's ignored. So that's the difference there between true positives, true negatives, false positives, and false negatives. The worst thing you can have is a false negative where you have vulnerabilities on your network but you're not picking them up. That can be very problematic. False positives can be annoying, but they won't necessarily be problematic or have you have a vulnerability that you can't track. Now we can have uh, intrusive, non-intrusive scans Intrusive scans, we're gonna look at details, and this is, it has to be a uh, credentialed scan to be an intrusive scan. You're gonna see missing patches, things that we need to harden on the systems, uh, misconfigurations. These are gonna be much more in depth than a non-intrusive scan, which will basically do a port scan and determine the type of network traffic from a device. So a credentialed scan is sometimes known as an intrusive scan. When you some devices are not, they don't respond well to intrusive scans. Printers, for example, can break. Uh, you, can, you can overload the embedded system on the printer if you do an intrusive scan. So oftentimes you wanna exclude those from your vulnerability scans. Uh, you wanna just have those as a non-intrusive scan. So that's good, something to keep in mind there. Now application scans, we can do vulnerabilities for applications themselves. We could find missing code or inoperable code. Maybe we have excessive uh, code or, or reuse code from a different application. We can also scan our web applications to determine if there's vulnerabilities 
if there are potential patches that we need to apply to maybe our web application firewall or um, there's vulnerabilities within the code itself. So application security scans, application vulnerability scans can be very effective, very helpful to help us identify those weaknesses within our applications, just like we would with our endpoints. And a lot of times what we want to do is we want to perform configuration review where we're establishing or we're identifying any deviations from our baseline. We may have a secure baseline or maybe we have certain applications that we want to be installed, applications that are restricted. The configuration review can determine if a device matches that that secure baseline. If there's any deviations, then th that device could be flagged. Configuration views are also sometimes done, a quick scans done on device before allowing a device to authenticate to a network. And that could be a very useful security tool to determine that we have only uh, devices with secure operating systems and proper patching, allowing them to connect to our network. So these are all the different types of vulnerability scans we can use and some strategies for doing them. Thank <laughs> you.